I am so excited for this. So welcome, um, you know, Irasima, and welcome to anyone who's watching our replay right now. This is a really fun workshop all about therapeutic art. And I'd like to kind of say it's like we're inspiring our hearts with art. Uh, and that's something that is really near and dear to me. So I'm just going to share my screen. I'm going to go over a little bit of why we're even doing this, and then we'll get started into all the fun stuff. Okay, so let me just present. There we go. So as I said, inspire your heart with art. That's why we're here. Uh, and I'm so, so grateful to be doing this workshop in, you know, in tandem with Hope for Stomach Cancer. They are the sponsors and really honoring Abby and Lexi's legacies through the Stomach Cancer Sisters. Abby was a dear, dear friend of mine and was so supportive of everything that I teach and I do within my business. So I feel just, you know, it just warms my heart to know that I can share my passions with all of you and really help you understand how uh, art is, is really a wonderful tool to add to our healing toolkits, as I like to say, um, as we heal through, you know, as you're healing on your cancer journey. And I'll share a bit more about my journey with chronic illness and how art really has helped me. So this is just a little bit of an idea of what we're going to go through today. You know, we're talking a little bit about creative self-regulation, how art heals, the importance of therapeutic art. We'll do a little sample meditation to ground ourselves. And then we're just going to do art creation and creative play, which is, you know, the most fun part of, of this workshop. So who am I? I am Hannah. I am a divine healer, a spiritual reader, a life coach, and a yoga teacher. But, you know, most of all, I've, I'm also a chronic disease warrior. And Living with chronic illness, living with chronic disease has really been a challenge. And it's only been the last couple of years that I feel as if I am really starting to understand all these different modalities that have, you know, helped me heal in the past, but have really helped me in the last couple of years as I have um, gone deeper on my liver disease journey. And so art has been a part of my life since I was a little girl, I've been painting since I was two. And I never really thought about it when I was younger about how art helped me heal. But looking back, it was like any time I was stressed or overwhelmed or upset, I always turned to art. And it really, it brought me back to who I was and what was, you know, important to me. And so actually, when I was doing my undergraduate thesis in 2017, I was graduating from um, with a Bachelor of Design, we had to choose a capstone project. And so that was really like, you know, our, our, our abilities to show everything we've learned in university and choose a topic that was really important to us. And so I live with endometriosis, and I decided to do a whole art exhibit on raising awareness for endometriosis through art and technology. And within that, I was introduced to therapeutic art. And I worked with about 20 different women who had endometriosis or have endometriosis, I should say. And I introduced them to art and how it could be very therapeutic and really helpful for their healing. And I got the most profound feedback. And so that really led me from there to get my certifications as a therapeutic art life coach to do trainings in art therapy. And I've been now doing this with people for going on five plus years. And I've really seen the magic that this holds. So I'm really excited for today. So my love for art. Uh, so these are some of my art pieces. You're like, oh, whoa, wow, these are, <laughs> are a little interesting. Well, so because I have endometriosis, I've always wanted in the past, you know, how can I use our menstrual products to create art? So as you can see here, I did this dress um, made out of pads. Uh, it was actually not at my exhibit that I did in 2017. I did another exhibit in 2019 where I had 60 pieces of art. Um, and I actually had all of the, oops, sorry. I had all of the attendees paint on here. So none of that, those paintings are mine. That was everyone who came. It was really interactive. So I like to say art is healing for the soul. And like I said, I kind of already shared a little bit about my journey of what led me to, to teaching therapeutic art and what really allowed me to express myself, express the frustration, the pain, the overwhelm, these emotions that really we don't want them to get stuck and stored in our body. If we're looking at um, this type of healing from a somatic lens or even from the polyvagal theory of healing our central nervous systems, 
And of course, the polyvagal theory was uh, founded by Dr. Stephen Porges. Uh, we learned to understand that our emotions actually can manifest in our body. Dr. Gaber Mate also talks about this. These are just some of my favorites and some of my, my teachers, actually. And so I started to, to use art as a form of therapy to make sure that these emotions of frustration, of pain, of overwhelm of sadness didn't get stuck and stored in my body and cause more sickness and disease than I already was living with. And so what is self-regulation really? So this is what art, I like to think art does for us. It helps us self-regulate. And as I said here, to put it simply, self-regulation is really the act of regulating or controlling ourselves by ourselves. When we practice self-regulation, it really gives us the ability to cope with our emotions in a healthy and productive way. And this resists in, um, sorry, assists us in resisting any addictive behaviors, impulsive behaviors um, that we might lean on when we are in pain. You know, I was someone who lived with an addiction for many, many years because alcohol was one of the few things that helped me uh, numb, if anything, right? And so I'm proudly three and a half years sober. And it really did change my life to get sober and then to come back to these different practices, art included. And so on top of that, we're here to really focus on creative self-regulation. And that comes in many forms, right? It doesn't have to just be art or painting or drawing. It can be writing poetry, playing music, dancing, the list goes on singing, right? So when we're really um, looking at this from a holistic health lens, it allows us, like I said, to release these um, stuck emotions from the body. So you don't have to be good at art at all to practice um, art, right? Like sometimes we over um, or underestimate the power of just like doodling on a page and how that can affect us. So we're really here to take back what it means to be an artist because we're all artists in our own right. You know, how you cook can be art, how you garden can be art, how you speak can be art. So, you know, as much as we're focusing on drawing today, that's not, that's not all of it. Okay, and so there's these six components to our whole self. And so when I'm, uh, you know, as a, as a spiritual life coach and in the work that I do, I really believe in a holistic type of healing. And when I say holistic, I'm talking WH. Uh, and that really takes in our whole perspective, our whole bodies, our mental, our emotional, our physical, our spiritual, our energetic, and of course, our self-expression. So as you might already know, mental, that's our thoughts, that's our intellect, that's how we gain knowledge. And that is really a wonderful way for us to use, you know, um, tangible facts, things we know and put them into art, kind of like I did with um, my exhibits on raising awareness for endometriosis. Emotional, which would be feelings that come in and out all day long, kind of like waves, right? We're always said, you know, ride the waves of your emotions, they'll ebb and they'll flow. And the more that we allow ourselves to be with those uncomfortable emotions of pain, of overwhelm, of frustration, of sadness, of anger, um, we actually are able to see what's underneath that. And sometimes that's some shame and guilt and frustration. And, and once we are able to see that and be with that, breathe into that, we're actually able to see what they can teach us, okay? Spiritual, of course, is our intuition, our inner guidance, our expression, and our experience of God or a higher power, source, the divine, the universe, whatever you identify as, there's no right or wrong. Physical, of course, is our actual physical bodies that we can see, that we can touch, our inner systems, our organs, our nervous system, our heart, our lungs. Energetic, of course, is the, the um, part of ourself that we sense with. So it's also known as our aura or in yoga, and we refer to this as our chakra system. And I do a lot of work with the chakras in the work that I do uh, with my clients. And then of course, self-expression, right? How we share our gifts, how we share our unique talents. And so all of these components are being activated when we do creative self-regulation, when we um, use art to help us heal. 
So you're actually allowing these six components of your whole self to be seen and to be heard and to be loved. And that is really imperative as you're going through this journey of living with cancer, whether you're in remission or not, maybe you're, you know, dealing with so many different things, appointments and surgeries and MRIs and CT scans and medication and the list goes on. And sometimes it can feel so draining. It's like, well, where do I find time for myself? So in those moments where maybe you're in bed and you're weak and you don't have the energy to get out of bed, maybe ask your partner, your friend, your mom, a family member, a loved one to bring you your pencil crayons and your sketchbook and just let your emotions, your imagination, downloads from spirit, whatever it is to come out onto the page and really give yourself that time for yourself. So art is healing. I really do believe art is healing all forms of art because it allows us to regulate our emotions and positively influence our moods. It reduces the amount of time that we spend in these states of like emotional uproar. It has a positive impact, of course, on our emotional and mental health, but our spiritual, our energetic, our physical even, right? Because as we work to um, draw or paint or whatever form of art you're using, you can actually begin to regulate your nervous system. And that is a part of our physical body. And like I said before, you do not have to be good at art. We're not here to be a Picasso or, you know, Monet. We're here to be ourselves and we're here to express ourselves just as we are. And, you know, just as you are right now is exactly how you're meant to be. Now, what is art therapy? <laughs> you know, this is actually a very um, well-known practice. A lot of therapists will bring this into their, um, their sessions with their clients now. And I've worked with different therapists to help teach them about art therapy. And it's just been very powerful. So art therapy relates to arts-based research as the individuals are participating in these sessions and giving them the chance to communicate their stories. So that's what we're doing when we're creating art. We're communicating a story, our story. Art therapy is founded on the idea that the creative process of making art helps with recovery as it is a form of nonverbal communication. It is used to inspire personal growth similar to forms of psychotherapy and counseling. So, you know, I love that because I really think that nonverbal communication aspect of this is absolutely wonderful because sometimes when we are going through these journeys, whether it's you're living with cancer, you're living with chronic disease, or even neither of those, because we all go through things, right? Men, if it's mental ailments or mental illness, sometimes it's hard to express what we're feeling, you know? It's like, ah, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm frustrated and I don't know how to, I don't know how to verbalize this. I don't know how to even intellectualize it. So art gives us that chance to just get it out, get it onto that page, that canvas, that paper. And so again, it's really allowing us to, you know, I wrote create a distraction from what we're going through. And, and I'm not saying a distraction in the sense that we're numbing out and we're um, turning to our addictive behaviors or our maladaptive coping mechanisms. This is a positive coping mechanism. So it's allowing you to kind of take a step back from your everyday and focus on this. And then as you continue on, you really start to see the benefit and the magic that it holds and how it actually is allowing you to go deeper into your journey of healing. So from an article that I cited um, actually in my paper, in my um, undergraduate thesis paper in 2017. So Leclerc um, focuses on, on art therapy and how it affects women specifically, but this can work for all people, whether you're non-binary, whether you're a man, you're a woman, whatever you identify as, um, as it helps us to work through the issues in a self-determining way. So it's allowing us to, to deconstruct and reconstruct our lives while we're actively participating in our healing. So that's really encouraging this new pattern of coping, allowing us to accept what is going on and trying to overcome these challenges with the assistance of art therapy. And I do really believe art has the ability to change lives, right? It's a 
powerful platform for those who are in pain, emotional, physical, mental, right? Pain manifests in the body in different ways. And our brain doesn't know the difference between emotional and physical pain. So it's really assisting with this um, and really like boosting our confidence in the sense, reminding ourselves, like, I don't have to be good at art to do this. And I'll say that lots because we're going to have so much fun with the creative play that like, you're going to be like, oh, <laughs> this is not at all what I was expecting because we're really going to get out of our heads and into our hearts as we inspire our hearts with art. So as I said before, this is extremely valuable for myself, I've seen it in my life. I've seen it with hundreds and hundreds of women that I've worked with in the last five years. And again, it's a, a unique way of viewing how we can use creative work to help us overcome difficulties. So this is just um, some, you know, a testimonial that a client of mine wrote for me about two years ago when I was really working very closely with her to use art therapy to help her overcome um, living with fibromyalgia, which is a chronic illness um, that really causes an intense amount of pain in the body. And she wrote, Hannah's passion and desire to help others heal is wonderfully palpable. Her therapeutic art session helped me understand how to scan, identify, and work towards releasing emotions and or trauma stored within my body. You don't have to be creative to benefit from this modality. Come with an open mind and explore how moving beyond traditional talk therapy can help to balance and restore your mind, your soul, and your body. So we thank Lisa for that because I've seen Lisa's growth over the past couple of years of using art to help her heal through fibromyalgia and she's come such a, such a long way. So it's, it warms my heart and it's just a reminder that this is very powerful. Okay, so now I've talked, I've talked, I've talked for the last 20 minutes <laughs> and I really want us to get into the fun stuff. So we're gonna do a little sound bowl healing and a grounding meditation, and then we'll get into the fun stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna put my music on, just give me a thumbs up, make sure that you can hear it okay. Might be a little quiet to start. Good, okay, perfect. And you can hear me okay with the music? Yeah, okay, great, thank you. So before we even get into this, let's just shake, shake off the body, shake anything out that's not serving us. Maybe do some horse lips. I like to do that just to get anything out so we can really come into stillness for this meditation. So when you feel ready, if it feels safe to do so today, I invite you to close your eyes and you can have your hands anywhere on your body that feels good. Maybe hands over your heart or you can have your hands on your lap or on your belly, whatever feels good in this moment. And just come back to your breath, becoming conscious of your inhales and your exhales and just noticing how your breath feels in your body today. There's no right or wrong. We're just noticing what we notice and giving ourselves permission to focus on our breath, which sometimes I think we take for granted the power of our breath. So coming back to stillness and focusing on breathing is a beautiful way to regulate your central nervous system. When we have a regulated central nervous system, we're able to live in joy and pleasure and love and connection. So taking a few belly breaths, if you can, doing your best to feel your belly moving as you breathe. When you inhale, the belly will rise or expand. And as you exhale, the belly will contract towards the spine very gently. And so we do these deep belly breaths, as I said, to calm our central nervous system. Because when we are stressed or anxious, we tend to breathe in our chests. And this is known as shallow breathing. Shallow breathing really doesn't assist us on our healing journeys because it can cause our brains to live in a sense of heightened alert. It can cause our nervous systems actually to think that there is a, um, a threat and cause us to go into 
fight, flight, fawn, or freeze, which are our four trauma responses. And so I like to believe that as we focus on these beautiful deep belly breaths, we're actually biohacking our nervous systems to a state of peace and calm. And I use the term biohacking as this is a great way to describe taking control of the state of our minds through our breath. So continuing to focus on your breath, notice your inhales and your exhales traveling through your body at their own natural rhythm. As we begin to turn inward, try to let go of any noises or distractions around you. And if your mind begins to wander at all, Simply bring your awareness back to your breath. Giving yourself permission to notice whatever is coming up, thoughts or feelings, emotions. And see if you can imagine these thoughts, these feelings, these emotions as clouds floating in the sky. There's no need to hold on to any of these right now. Simply notice their presence, breathe into them, and then let them move along just as you would with clouds floating across the sky. Sometimes it's nice to place what you are feeling or thinking onto the cloud and just watch it float away. Continuing to focus on your breath. Your breath is your anchor. You have it with you at all times and you can return to it whenever you need through our meditation tonight and always. On your next inhale, begin to imagine a beam of light starting at your root chakra at the base of your spine and growing all the way up your spine, shooting out the very top of your head, your crown chakra. This beautiful beam of light is your incredible energy shining outwards, spilling out onto all of those in your life who you love. Take a deep inhale and breathe in your love for them. And as you exhale, their love comes back through that beam of light and into you. Breathing into this love that feels like sunshine radiating through your entire body. Now on your next inhale, I invite you to imagine yourself sitting on a tree trunk. And as you imagine yourself sitting tall, grounded into the tree, your roots start to grow down towards the center of the earth. So that you, the tree trunk, and the center of the earth are connected as one. 
As you inhale, you begin to absorb all of the grounding energy from the earth, allowing the steady pulse of Mother Gaia to fill you with her nurturing support. And as you exhale, you begin to let go of anything that isn't serving you in this moment, allowing the roots of your tree trunk to take these uncertainties or pain or sorrow or doubt down to the center of the earth. Your pain, your sorrow, your doubt, your uncertainty, anything that's coming up in this moment, you do not have to carry it. The earth is ready to hold everything and anything so you can become more grounded in your being. And so you can let go. Allow yourself to breathe and just let go. Continuing to focus on these deep belly breaths. And then on your next inhale, begin to imagine yourself inside of a mountain. Mountains experience extremes due to their environments, yet still they stand tall. Staying calm amongst the ever-changing seasons around them. As you breathe in, begin to channel the calm and centeredness of this mountain. Focusing on balancing your internal world, even when your external world may seem out of control. On your next few exhales, see if you can let go of anything that you cannot control. Continuing to breathe deeply and uh, allow yourself to continue to absorb all of this grounding energy you've channeled during our meditation today. Remember that you can access this at any time. You just need to bring your attention to your breath and channel those deep belly breaths. We are going to close with three cleansing breaths together, inhaling for a count of five, holding for a count of two, and exhaling for a count of five. So let's do this together, inhaling through the nose, five, four, three, two, one, hold. Exhaling, five, four, three, two, one. 
Again, inhaling, five, four, three, two, one, hold. Exhaling, five, four, three, two, one. One more. Inhaling, five, four, three, two, one, hold. Exhaling, five, four, three, two, one. And now just allow your breath to come back to its natural rhythm, in through the nose, out through the nose. And just begin to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, maybe roll out your neck. Allow yourself to come back to this physical present moment. Then inhaling, bringing your hands to prayer, Anjali Mudra in front of your heart center, bowing the head. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. And then slowly blinking your eyes open and coming back. Okay, so we're gonna have some fun now. So I'm just gonna turn my music down. There we go. Okay, so get your sketchbook or your paper, your pencils, whatever you have um, nearby. I'm just gonna move my sound bowl out of the way. My desk isn't as big as I'd like it for all this. So <laughs> I gotta work with the space I have. So the first exercise we're gonna do, let me just get to my page. I want you to draw a circle on your page. And you can do this with pencil crayons too if you want. You don't have to limit yourself just to pencils. I like to start with a pencil and then go from there. So you're drawing a circle in the middle of the page. Doesn't have to be super big, just super simple like this. And then I want you to write at the top, I forgive myself for. Okay, I forgive myself for dot, dot, dot. And I'm just gonna put a song on and what we're gonna do while this song plays is we're going to allow ourselves to write what we're forgiving ourselves for in the circle, around the circle. Maybe you wanna draw what you're forgiving yourself for. There's no right or wrong way to do this exercise. Just really let you know, your, your inner wisdom guide you. So I'll put this song on and we're gonna do this for the full song. It's just over two minutes long. I wanna be free, so free. I can travel on through the breeze. Like a bird in a tree. Like a dolphin in the sea. I wanna fly high. So high, like an eagle in the sky. And when my time has come, I'll let it all go with a sigh. But your mama, coming home to the place where I belong. But your mama. Do the 
Okay. So with that, we're still going to add on to this a little bit. Um, so now that you've written maybe inside the circle what you're forgiving yourself for, I want you to write outside the circle, kind of surrounding it, what that forgiveness needs. Does it need love? Does it need compassion? Does it need a little poem to remind how far you've come? So just to give an example, so I wrote for myself, I'm I'm forg I forgive myself for shaming myself for past mistakes. Uh, something I need to work on lots is forgiving myself for shame. So I might write around it, you know, I will hold my myself with loving compassion as I learn to forgive. And we're just going to do this again, just for another two minutes or so, um, as we write what is needed to help us on our journey at the moment. Okay, so just finish up what you might be writing. And I can share what we did. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect or anything. So this is mine. I forgive myself for shaming myself for past mistakes. And then I wrote, my resilient energy holds me. Oh, I can't read it upside down with tender, loving care. And I also wrote, I am supported as I heal this shame by the grounding wisdom of the earth. And so just some hearts. I don't really know if that's a sun or a beam or whatever, but it just felt good to draw those little squiggles. And so it doesn't have to make sense. But what I do want you to reflect on a little bit is the colors that you chose. Because all the colors, each color has a different um, meaning and a different energetic representation. So it's just sometimes nice to know like you know yellow brings joy happiness green is grounding it's abundant um what else did I use blue is calming orange brings out our passion so do you want to share yours can I see yours sorry I didn't do colors yet that's okay <laughs> you want do you want a couple minutes to add some colors yes okay I'm gonna put on another song you can add some colors thank you Oh, of course, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, how does it feel now? <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. Oh wait, you're still muted. So not not so pretty, but I'll that's tell okay. You, I'll tell you what it looks like. Yes. And it'll probably make me cry. I'm already crying. I don't even know why. <laughs> okay. Um oh shoot, sorry, hold on. I'm trying to get <laughs> that's okay. Um, okay, so uh, so my circle, I made blue on the outside and I feel like maybe like, cause it's kind of like my world, right? Um, I first forgive myself for feeling like I fail, for not feeling enough, for loving, for not loving myself enough for hating my scars, for feeling like 
my diagnosis consumes all of our lives for feeling like I fail my kids and I fail my family around. And I feel like this is my life, right? My world um, and around my, my little planet, myself. I need to um, allow myself some grace have some more compassion for myself, to love myself a little more and to accept my new me. Yes. So, this is me. <laughs> oh, that is so beautiful. And you know, those tears are just forms of release. When we cry, we're releasing the cortisol from our body, we're releasing the stress and know that, you know, you are so safe here. And I just want you to bring your hands over your heart and close your eyes. And take a few deep breaths, inhaling through the nose. Sigh it out the mouth on the exhale. Two more, just like that. You are doing so well, you're doing so much and allowing yourself these moments of peace and within of forgiving, even though it's painful and it's frustrating and it makes you sad and angry and overwhelmed. You are so beautiful. You are so loving. You are so healing. I see your beautiful radiant light shining through regardless. And I love you and I see you as you are. And you are such an inspiration to those in your life. And I know that everyone in your life forgives you just as much as you're learning to forgive yourself. And it's a practice. It doesn't happen overnight. We practice this a little bit every day so we can remind ourselves that we deserve the forgiveness. So thank you for sharing because I know that you know, that was so touching and brought tears to my eyes. And I, I feel so lucky that you are here to experience this with me. Thank you. Of course. So our next one is a little bit um, more uplifting and it is, it will probably make us both laugh, which I think is <laughs> laughter is some of the best medicine. So what we're going to do, and this is going to sound a little silly, but we're going to start by um, drawing and let's say, let's just pretend we're drawing each other. Usually I do this as like a self portrait. We draw ourselves, but let's mix it up and let's draw each other since we can see each other on Zoom. Um, but we're going to do it with our eyes closed. <laughs> okay, so I'll put on a song just for about one minute and we're just going to do our best to draw each other with our eyes closed uh, and i know this this always makes me laugh because it, it always turns out so cute so put on the music when you're ready get your pencil or your pen to your paper or your pencil crayon whatever you're choosing to use and then let's close our eyes <laughs> and let's begin Okay, pencil down. Let's open our eyes and see how these turned out. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see. Let's see me. I want to see what you did. Oh my gosh, that turned out pretty good considering. Look how close it is to the actual face. I'm impressed. I wish I could say the same for you. 
I tried. I drew hearts all around you as like the love that's radiating around you and holding you. But I don't know what happened with your head and I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, you're muted. I can't hear you. I said, I, I love the curly hair. I can totally see the attempt right there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I did try my best. Oh, I love it. Okay. So now that we did that one, we're actually going to do that again, but we're, we can look at each other this time. We can, don't have to have our eyes closed, but we're going to use our opposite hand. So your non-dominant hand. Okay. So again, we'll do this for about a minute. I'll put the song back on and then we'll show each other. <laughs> Okay, pencils down or whatever we're using. <laughs> okay, I feel like this one turned out a little better. <laughs> okay, I don't know, hopefully you can see that. Okay, I find it hard to draw um, heart, like I draw really light with my left hand. Yes, I like, and, and I chose to use a pencil for that reason. Uh, I mean, not a pencil, crayons for that reason, so that I could get a little bit of darkness. But oh, I love that! I, I, I actually really like the way it turned out. I'd like to try to get a little bit of your purple shirt, because or while well, your shirt looks, with the flowers, you did a great job. They look like vines. Yes, I was trying to get a little bit of that vine going, but I was like, I don't know, you know, they look purple from here, but they might be black now that I'm looking at your shirt a little better. It's okay. One of my favorite colors is purple, as you can tell. My office is purple, so I love it. I really do. Okay, so that was that was so. These are my these are some of my favorite exercises to do. Okay, so now we're gonna do it one more time, but instead of eyes closed or left hand, you're gonna use your your dominant hand. But we're not gonna take we're not gonna lift the pencil or the whatever off the page. Okay. You have to keep it on the page the whole time. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put a song on again. We'll do it for about a minute and, and then we'll share. I'm drawing you, correct? Yes. Okay. Unless you want to draw yourself. No, no, no. I'm, I'm all up for drawing you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
<laughs> I know, I'm like, I think it looks like you have glasses. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, well, mine's not any better, so don't worry. <laughs> and they don't have to look good. We're just having fun anyway. Okay, pencils down. Let's see. <laughs> oh, you did a really good job. That's really good. It's kind of fun, hey? It's just a little different. Like we're, I love it because when we do these exercises, we're really getting out of our usual brain patterns of how we think and how we feel and how we act. Um, so we can bring that into our everyday. So. Those are just a few exercises. They're super simple, but I love teaching them because I think they're really fun. Like I do them with my my nieces. Um, they're really fun to do with kids. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And also just to give us a chance to remind ourselves like art doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. And so, you know, as you go forward um, after this workshop and you want to include this in your, you know, weekly practice, monthly practice, daily practice, whatever feels right, I do um, suggest doing that circle exercise with the, what you forgive yourself for maybe about once a week and just checking in to show yourself that love and compassion and, and remind yourself how resilient you are. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. Do you have any questions before we end? No, I just, I really appreciate um, the chance to be vulnerable, right? Because. Yeah. I, I try to sometimes more often than not to walk around like everything is fine and it's sometimes okay to not be fine and and have a safe space to do it so thank yeah. you you're so welcome right our strength is in our vulnerability and I truly believe it's okay to not be okay we can't bypass feeling frustration and pain and sorrow and sadness and anger and you know shame and guilt um because then, then that just ends up being toxic positivity. And we want to feel that positivity as, um, you know, genuinely as possible. And I appreciate your vulnerability. I appreciate your strength and your resilience and your love and your dedication to yourself and your family, your healing, your community. It's truly inspirational. And I'm just so grateful to be able to hold this space. Thank you. You're welcome. So just bring our hands over our heart again and let's just take three deep breaths to end together breathing in through the nose sigh out the mouth two more last one thank you thank you thank you for this beautiful evening i'm so excited we meet next week wednesday for our full moon yoga class. And that is from um, five to six PST. Um, and that one, that would be eight to nine EST. I'm just making sure I'm doing that right in my head. <laughs> and the full moon yoga, we're really gonna be releasing stress from the body, any stress that's stored in our hips, tension there. It's a very accessible class, all ages, all levels. You don't have to ever practice yoga before to come. I'm gonna offer a lot of modifications. So it's just gonna be accessible for all.